Will technology kill jobs and aggravate inequality or bring in more significant work in healthier societies? This question has worried humankind ever since technological investment took over certain manual jobs. Digital cameras and mobile phones change photography and the way we click photos. To say resourceful, photographers had no option but to embrace the new technology. At one point, nobody could have thought that some interesting jobs would not make it to a list of top future jobs and would be redundant in the future. The future of work is our main focus on the show this week. Welcome to Business Insights on PLOS TV Africa. I am Justin Akadone. Now, the last has not been heard about the 5.01 trillion naira loan to finance the 2022 budget, plus food security, high cost of trade, among others, rounded up business Nigeria this week. Here are the highlights. The Senate on Wednesday summoned the accounting officers of seven federal ministries, departments and agencies over their failure to defend their imputes in the 5.01 trillion naira loans proposed to fund the 2022 budget deficit. President of Senate Ahmed Lawan decries the known appearance of affected MDAs before the Senate Committee on Loan and Foreign Debts. While issuing the summons at the close of plenary, Lawal said if the MDAs fail to appear, the Senate would take appropriate and prompt actions against them. The Director General of the World Trade Organization, Dr. Ngozio Konjo Iwala, has said that Nigeria's trade costs are too high and therefore cannot attract investment. Okonjo Iwala said these two President Mohamed Buhari, ministers and all the top government officials on Tuesday at a two-day mid-term ministerial performance review retreat organized by the Office of the Secretary to the Government of the Federation at the Presidential Villa Abuja. Okonjo Iwela, former Minister of Finance and Coordinating Minister of Economy, stated these via virtual address. The Central Bank of Nigeria, CBN, has directed banks to apply the indicative exchange rate in the investors' and exporters' window for outbound payment through the Pan-African Payment and Settlement System, PAPS. PAPS is the first centralized payment market infrastructure for processing, clearing, and settling of intra-African trade and commerce payment. It was set up by the Afrexim Bank in partnership with West African Money Institute. The Nigerian Commodity Exchange, NCX, has engaged various stakeholders in the nation's agro-commodities sector with a view to crashing the soaring price of food items across the country. NCS spokesman Chris Ichie Chuku said that the move to synergize with relevant agencies to bring down the prices of food items in the country was in line with the directives of President Mohamed Buhari. I'm now being joined by the CEO of Crystal Hills Tech Hub and the business development strategist Songo Timile. He is an alumnus of the Lagos Business School. Timile has designed and implemented smart systems to enhance efficiency at work and life generally. Many thanks for joining us on Business Insight and Plus TV Africa to look at the future of work for today. Timile, we do appreciate you joining us. Oh, hi, Justin. It's nice to be here. Yeah, it is our pleasure. Let's just uh, dive into the show, if we uh, may. Uh, looking at uh, the future of work in Nigeria, a whole lot has changed. In my intro, I said uh, most people never believe that some jobs uh, would become uh, redundant. So much so after the, you know, the 2020 pandemic and all of that, most people lost their jobs and uh, a lot of people were actually working from home. But precisely, if we're talking about the future of work in Nigeria, what should we be looking at right now? So, Justin, thank you so much for that question. So, when we talk about the future of work, a lot of times when people hear future of work, what comes to mind is always um, collaboration, interaction, working from the cloud. And, I mean, a lot of businesses know that and they are trying to adapt to it. But there is a part of it that we really talk about and really discuss about 
And that is the process, the process, the process behind you being able to transit from the way you were, the old way of doing things, and the new way, the future of work. And I mean, when designing that process is when we begin to face issues of, you know, compliance and, and, a, and a whole lot. And this is the challenge that a lot of SMEs are facing in terms of being able to adapt to technology, um, technology and the future of work. But I mean, I feel like if we pay more attention on the process, the process behind it, and um, being able to, because every organization does not have the same structure. Every organization will not adapt to the, you know, every organization will not adapt to change the same way. So that's why I feel like the process in which, um, the process in which um, it involves is much more even important than actually the platform that you use in being able to, you know, move on into the future of being able to work. All right, Tibile, let me just paint a scenario right now. Specifically, let me use um, the photography as um, a case study. Back in the day, in the 80s and 90s, we had lots of, uh, you know, we have uh, photographic uh, studios where people would ordinarily just go and, uh, you know, take pictures to commemorate events, their birthdays, uh, you know, when they have been feeling very good with themselves, they just want to take pictures. But gone at those days, Ni uh, Nigerians and indeed the world now, you know, have everything at their fingertips. The world has gone global and almost every Everyone is doing everything from their personal mobile phones. Uh, so what do you really, what would you really say about uh, jobs that uh, may stay or may not stay, uh, let's say in the next five years, specifically here in Nigeria? So Justin, I'm going to use a scenario for this. It is, we we'll rather, you rather get on the train than stay in front of the train. It is known, we all know that the future work is coming. We all know that machine and technology is taking over a lot of jobs. But the truth about it is that there are some jobs that there are some jobs that machines can never take. And those are jobs that require, you know, we can um, when it comes to feelings, when it comes to anything that has to do with emotions, that has to do with empathy, machine can never take those jobs. And anything that has to do with creativity. Creativity. Creativity will never go out of work, and machine can never take away our creativity. So the thing is that we need to accept, I mean, um, these technologies that have come are not against us. We need to accept it. We need to know that. We need to accept that it has come to stay, and we now begin to unlearn some things that we've learned, and now relearn them in a way that we will also be ahead of the technology, and we'll own these technologies so that we'll, so that we'll be able to control it. Okay. But if we continue trying to do the old things that we were trying to, that we used to do before, we probably might still have issues. All right, uh, looking at all of the technology, uh, talking about artificial intelligence and um, all of um, the, you know, the techy word stuff that people use these days now. So how does one position himself um, for, or herself for the future so that one does not really, you know, get all trapped? You know, in the old ways of doing things. For instance, right now, do you need to do some sort of upgrading? What exactly can you do to be relevant in the future so as to be sure that uh, even if uh, events are changing and technologies are improving, advancing by the day, you will still be relevant in your sphere? Yes, like I said earlier, it has to do with a lot of unlearning and relearning. And aside from that also, we need to also understand that times have changed Trends are changing and, um, you know, technologies are different from what they used to be before. And also we need to, I mean, a lot of businesses need to be encouraged to start thinking about how to, um, how to um, operate, operate um, globally or operate in the global perspective. And that, is how to, and that has to do with cloud. Like take for instance now, there are still a lot of businesses that still pay employees 40000 naira, 50000 naira. I mean, they've been, paying, they've been paying that even before the pandemic. And you know what is affecting, you know what is happening with our economy currently? Yes, it is a bit difficult because businesses are struggling and all. But, you know, um, we can, we, if we don't change the way we used to do things, I mean, we will not, if we don't decide to change the way we used to do things, we will not see the need, we will not see, um, we will not see the advantages in trying to adapt technologies that require you being able to work remotely and all. Okay, now what would your advice be for the employer? We have looked at the employee aspect. Let's talk about the employers now for a bit. Um, right now, most people are faced uh, with, um, the, of course, all the bottlenecks of the COVID-19 pandemic. And uh, 
as much as possible, they have tried to reduce on personal cost, and uh, more people are working, you know, from home these days now. So how can you, you know, what can you say now to the employer to be ensure that in as much as uh, most people are working offline and remotely, that the job gets to be done? So the job is easier when there are processes in place. The job is easier when the organization has already done the due diligence that they need to do, when they have systems and procedures in place. Now, for a small business that don't have um, high capital to, I mean, hire an HR, hire a business development manager, hire, you know, there are lots of small businesses that are still struggling with their finance and trying to do things smaller. You know, I what I recommend is the use of softwares. There are lots of softwares that make work easier these days. I mean, you have softwares that are, now we have softwares that will take up the whole entire task from onboarding of a customer to operations, task management, project management within the organization, um, HR processes, payroll, and all those things. There are lots of softwares that are coming up now that are able to take care of that. I mean, what organizations need to focus on is compliance, getting a software that works, and being able to get the employees to comply with the use of those systems and follow up with it. I mean, you'll be surprised the kind of reports that you need and you'll be able to get easily with less, you know, with less amount of employees in your, in your system. So if I should just uh, speak uh, generally right now, how would you say, uh, speaking of preparedness right now, how would you say Nigeria is doing when it comes to, you know, really living, you know, with the future of work as it were, you know, come 2030, most people, you know, would, be, would have embraced artificial intelligence completely. But where are we right now as a country? I mean, a lot of small businesses in Nigeria are still struggling with accepting the fact that um, the trend and work has actually changed in general. A lot of businesses are still struggling with the fact that um, um, employees can actually work from home. Rather than we focusing on time, we should focus on efficiency and performance of our employees. And I mean, that is, that, 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 that is very, very important. And I feel like um, it is something that would gradually happen. But the earlier the organizations that have decided to, you know, that decide to emulate this are growing faster. Look at companies, look at, um, let's look at the global people, um, let's look at the, um, it from the global perspective and look at companies like Uber. Uber is um, completely automated, even from even the process and the way they actually work. And I mean, you will see companies like Domino's now that are actually now coming up with delivery system that has to do with drones. You know, these are innovations that are coming up. These are innovations that are coming up and are taking over. Whether we like it or not, we can't be against it. We have to accept it and we have to retrain ourselves to actually be the ones in the forefront of these technologies. And that is the trend for business that, I mean, businesses should go if they actually want to still be relevant in the, future, in, 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 um, in the years to come. All right, Gentile, just before we let you go, I just want to get your final words for people who may... Uh, who are really starting out and that uh, they are really worried that uh, things were, are not really what they assumed they would be and uh, they're trying to grapple with how the future or what the future holds for them. What would your advice be for the man who just has about 800,000 naira and he needs to start some sort of a business and he's wondering what the future holds in terms of um, the way work has been done right now? Okay. Um, for businesses for people that i mean we understand how the country is and um, a lot of people are trying to start businesses and all what i recommend is trying to start something focus on what is important focus on efficiency focus on things that will actually give you value and focus on the, and, and focus less on things that you don't have control over focus on those things that you can control and i mean the kind of the kind of businesses the kind of business you um, venture into should actually be something that you actually know a lot about. And you see, um, in um, right now, what is very important for us to do is actually learn. We need to actually learn, keep learning, and you know, keep on learning a lot of things that we've known in the past that we think is supposed to be the trend, and keep relearning again, relearning new things and new trends. 
All right. Uh, thank you so much, um, Timile, for uh, sharing your thoughts and, of course, um, all that we need to know concerning the future of work and how prepared we are as a country and what the employers uh, and the employee alike need to do to ensure that they stay relevant and their jobs and, of course, their businesses are secure. We do appreciate your time. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. All right, welcome. A world in which top talent is fought over so fiercely that the most skillful workers hire personal agents to manage their careers is hard to imagine. The idea is to stay prepared for that future. But still talking about future, just what are the prospects for event planners? How can they weather the storm? We'll leave you with that details on Business 101 Plus, what the Lagos State Government is doing concerning housing for residents. And that's the size of our show for this week. Let's do it again next time. I am Justin Akadonye. Many thanks for watching. Rising from the aftermath of the global COVID-19 pandemic, the event industry is not relenting in positioning its brand to provide solutions to some of the industry needs. Addressing newsmen in Lagos ahead of the fifth edition of the annual Busy Bee Event Summit, organizers say over 1,000 driving entrepreneurs have passed through its training. The entrepreneurial workshop seeks to address the challenges of event professionals, bringing on board season and as parts to share experiences and prefer solutions. Thus, bringing on board business consultants, seasoned event experts to come share their world of experience and also prefer solutions to burning issues at hand. Make you aware that there is challenges, there is crisis, but how do you navigate? And by the time you know, at least I'm a product of the event industry, and by God's grace, by the time I speak in public service, I can also share my story to say, this is where I started from. The event industry contributes, uh, if I'm not mistaken, about three billion, or thereabouts, in Lagos State to the Congress. Always party. Even now that post COVID, there's no money, there's no money. We are buying a share, we are doing party. And it is this we, the same event professionals, that they patronize. So, what it just means is that, number one, the event professional, the event industry contributes to the growth of the economy. We are giving out jobs, we are paying ushers, we are getting waiters, we are cooking food. The other day they put up that the baking items have gone high. But we are still buying. My son's birthday is this weekend and I have paid the baker. You understand? So we are still spending the money. So the Bayview Estate, Ikati Elegushi Leki, brings the number of housing estates commissioned so far by Governor Sowonlu to 11. The project consists of 100 units of 68 terraces of four bedrooms with a maid's room age and 32 flats of three bedrooms with a maid's room. It has also come looking at the entire family ecosystem. And so you have a swimming pool, you have a gym, you have a small hall, you have everything that can indeed, you know, meet the needs of the families of today. According to Sawunlu, another set of housing estate will be commissioned before the end of the year and first quarter of next year. The is over 1,000 flats, but the phase one of it is over 744 flats. We want to ensure before the end of the year that we also hand over you know, um, phase one of Shongotedo, which will be about 744 um, units. We'll also have houses that we're trying to complete at Odonosa in Agboa. Um, that also we're pushing all our contractors to ensure that we complete. And of course, the Undubuse Kano housing estate in Bagada. Commissioner for Housing Moruf Akinde Rufatai said the Somulu's administration is committed to resolving the housing deficit in the state. This, he noted, was aimed at boosting the state's economy and increase its internally generated revenue. The inclusion of this general of housing scheme in our portfolio is part of our social inclusion housing policy in ensuring that all classes of inhabitants are catered for by this administration. It's also part of our goal of developing a 21st century economy that housing de development should encompass luxury apartments as it is, the, it, is the manner, it is the manner in cities of our caliber. While appreciating Sawunlu for the support, the managing director of LSDPC, Dakurulai Ha Yusuf, 
assured that no effort will be spared at ensuring that no housing scheme is left uncompleted. Under the Sonwolu administration in the last one year, we have completed and delivered in Among them are the Cotland Villa Estate on Platinum Road, Lekki. The project was initiated four years ago while Sonwolu was the MD CEO of the organization. From Lagos, Love Ikuku Oyedukun, reporting for Plus TV Africa.